We're finding ourselves facing times that have shifted our entire world and have in one way or another forced us to focus on revolutionizing, innovating, and sometimes adapting. But one thing that has become completely inevitable, or one thing that some people feel is inevitable, is the need to do inward work. We've somewhat become confined to our environments, or we were at some point confined, confined to our environments, with almost little or nothing to do. Home, work, school and play seemingly became one, and the need to get out was growing by the hour. But one thing we seem to have forgotten about in all of this madness is ourselves and how we truly are all we need to help us gain the edge. Dumelang, my name is Bulela Podisa. I'm an award-winning broadcaster, a voiceover artist, a facilitator, an MC, and an entrepreneur. And in the past year, I shamelessly walked away from everything that I knew to be true and acceptable and actually decided to define that for myself through self-mastery, which is a never-ending journey, but one that will introduce you to your higher self. I know this sounds crazy, but let's unpack it. Now, one would think that gaining themselves as the edge is an easy thing to do. But the reality of it is that it's not. Backing yourself goes far beyond your usual self-care routines. The long baths, the buying of flowers are all great and everything. But the true essence of it all requires us to dig deep and take the plunge. The reality of this only starts sinking in when we're forced or required to face our fears. If you were offered one million rand that would set you up for good and really well in exchange for you to bungee jump or skydive, how long would it take you to do it without doubting or thinking twice about whether you are capable of doing it or what could possibly happen mid-fall? And that's the reality of life. We're often finding ourselves doubting, questioning, when it's time to make a decision without actually realizing that all that doubt and those questions is a fear that's coming in the way of us actually facing the reality of what we actually need to be doing to get to where we want to get to. This reality actually only kicked in for me when I had to say no to a job that would really set me up really well in the hopes of actually pursuing my dream in the media and entertainment space. This was hard because the job was guaranteed, whereas my success in the industry, not so much. Well, that's if I gave into the possibility of that actually not happening. My dreams became more real and I felt I actually needed to pursue it. Giving into the fear of things not working out is easy because self-doubt sometimes creeps in. People's negative opinions about what you're doing sometimes heightens that doubt. And the need to survive shoots it out the roof because your first thought is how your life could possibly turn out should things not work out. I started my career off as a news anchor, a good one at that, with two nominations in my pocket, growing in that space would not have been difficult, but it's not what I wanted. It's really not what I wanted to do, so I had to go back to the drawing board and pursue what I wanted, which was being a presenter. It wasn't an easy decision to make, with the fact that I was much older and had a goal to be successful at 25, and at 23, I decided to make that decision. On the other hand, people's opinions were telling me how well I'm doing and that I should stay in that department, but I was not hearing it. My willpower wanted something else, and I was stopping at nothing to achieve it. When I first started off as a presenter, the feedback was horrible. <laughs> And I started regretting my decision. I started thinking about people possibly being right about me not being able to do this. But the life force of this passion in me told me otherwise. And I kept pushing. See, the thing about fear is that it can cripple you. And if you don't face it head on, you can find yourself living a life you didn't choose to live. And this is where self-mastery actually kicks in. Deepak Chopra has given us four steps to self-mastery. The first step is awareness. So you're either living in the past or the future based on your thought process or the thoughts that circulate your mind. Awareness is the ability to bring yourself to the present state. 
Now, what do I mean by this? Had I listened to the opinions of other people, I would have been thinking about the fact that I've got two nominations as a news anchor. Those could help me into the space. Or I could be thinking about the fact that with those nominations, I possibly could be great at what I do. But the awareness of it all, the reality of it all, was that it's not what I wanted. I wanted to be a presenter, and I brought myself to the conscious state of that, the awareness of it, and I decided to go for it. And sometimes that's what we need. What is the present state telling me to do now? It's only through that that you can set yourself and prepare yourself for the coming state. The second step is discernment or choice. Now this is something very difficult because everything leading up to this present moment or the moment that you're currently finding yourself in is brought about by choice. And often we love to blame people for the choices that we make, but be aware to choose consciously. And that's the key. You need to choose consciously because a lot of things shape our subconscious mind and sometimes we make decisions subconsciously or unconsciously. Your environment, for instance, shapes your subconscious mind. What you're eating, what you're watching, who you associate yourself with, shapes your subconscious mind. At some point, you find yourself making decisions, you find yourself doing things that you weren't prepared to be doing, all because of the people that you decided to blame for the decisions that you made, not realizing that that's how you decided to shape your subconscious mind. But if you bring yourself to a conscious state of being, to a conscious state of mind, you have more control of your thought process. You have more control of the choices that you make. Had I decided that I'm a news anchor, I've got nominations behind my name, people are telling me I'm great, and made decisions based on that, that would have been an unconscious or subconscious choice. But what I wanted was me bringing myself to my conscious state of being and deciding what I needed. And in that, I made a conscious choice. The third step is action or focus. Also something other people might think is quite difficult. Once your choice has been made, you actually need to be courageous enough to act on it. I made the choice that I was leaving the news desk and decided to pursue my goal as a presenter. It wasn't an easy one because it was starting from scratch. I had to now relearn running a desk. I had to now relearn bringing myself and my personality into the presenter space where in actual fact, as a news anchor, all I did was read and deliver the news to the listener. But now, the thought of the fact that I'm 23 years old, I've got a goal at 25, and I need to act on this, could have made me choose something different. But my courage and knowing what I want made me choose what I needed to choose, and that set me up for where I am today. The third, the fourth rather, and final step is realization. When you realize self-mastery, you radiate your light and divinity for all, and I mean everyone, to enjoy. I'm at a place in my life right now where I'm finding myself working nonstop. I've been in the presenter desk or presenter seat for three years. The first year was the hardest. The second year, I was finding my feet. The third year, I'd say I'm somewhat there. But one thing I can tell you is that my light radiates. I can feel it. And I hear it in the responses of people that I work with, people that I come in contact with, people that I surround myself with. Not only do I see that in them and myself, but the universe or the environment has, de has decided to conspire in my favor. Not so long ago, I walked away with two awards from the SA Radio Awards, and that's because I made a conscious choice. That's because I put fear aside and I, walked into the, and I walked into the direction of what sets my soul on fire. I'm standing here today delivering this TED talk, manifesting one of my wildest dreams, something I never really thought would come to life so soon, but here we are. And that's what happens when you decide to walk in the direction of what sets your soul on fire. 
That's what happens when you decide that you're going to put fear aside and actually do what you have to do for yourself. Forget about everyone else. Forget about who was telling you what. Forget about those fears for a while and challenge yourself to take the plunge. Challenge yourself to walk in your light because God created us as light beings. It's only by choice that we decide to be something else. In closing, I was pondering, sitting by myself, trying to think of how or what the best way to close this TED talk would be. And it dawned on me that we're all spiritual beings just here on earth to have a human experience. And in that experience, that's where we find our direction. Spirituality is not something that is requiring you to be perfect. It's not something that requires perfection. But it requires constant interaction with your highest self. And that is your conscious state of being. That is a true expression of who God is. Now I want to ask you, who would God be in the space that you find yourself in? Once you know the answer to that, be exactly that. My name is Bulela Pudisa, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk.